Hey everybody, this is A7X fan Ben with uh, vlog number 48, I believe, of Pirates with Ben. And God Mason has a new rankings thread up, ranking the top 10 seven point ships, which I'm going to respond to pretty soon, hopefully. And Xerix has a couple new reports up for Century of Economy 2018, both on YouTube. So they're pretty interesting. So you can check those out, and I'll try to link in the description. And lately I've been putting uh, his channel at the end of the videos as well. And on Board Game Geek, which is another site that features Pirate CSG, it has a page there, of course, called Pirates of the Spanish Main. And there are a few pictures from today. Somebody has a custom hammerhead shark named after Mjolnir, uh, which I guess is Thor's hammer. So there's a couple cool pictures. It looks like there's like three or four, but uh, they uploaded like the card as well, the great hammerhead shark. So it's cool to see customs kind of come to life. Instead of just being on paper, that's something I haven't done really at all yet. Um, partly because of Vassal, though, so definitely a shift to the virtual stuff over time. So, and it looks like the ship is accustomed to, at least to some extent, looks like it was modeled after the uh, Cristal del Obispo, uh, the Santa Ana, apparently, another version of it, of course. So, so that's pretty cool. I'll put a link to the boarding beat page, or at least the pictures in the description, so you can check that out. A custom uh, coming to life there in a picture posted today. And then deals of the day, I've got a few things up. The unpunched Zeus is still at only $20. It doesn't end for another four days, but Dogen has a, a bunch of 10 masters and a lot of stuff up in general. So it's gonna, it's gonna go up, no doubt, but uh, it's still lower than the, the unpunched ones, if you want to bid on that. Uh, it's a good deal as of now, of course. Um, and then here we've got a nice Spanish lot of SE and LE stuff, special edition, limited edition, including some really rare stuff from uh, Rise of the Fiends. The other version of the San Cristobal's, the 15-point version, is almost as good of a ship as the 17-point version. Both fantastic. Valoroso is actually a ship I find underrated. Virtuous Wind is fantastic. Dominic Frida, both versions of him are great, of course. And then lastly, uh, the Revolution 36-pack box for 70 bucks, basically 70 is still around. Um, and it says it's ending soon, but they're probably going to release it, but might as well grab some Revolution as well. So you can find links to all those in the description, as always. And then Card of the Day, sets 1 through 14, number 8, and that's Frozen North. So I think I've finally memorized, I think through this, through this blog, I think I memorized all the all the set numbers pretty much, just about anyway. So, one to three hundred three for the game piece number for Frozen North two seventeen, and that's actually a Silver Explorer. So that's a an interesting number to come up with because it's the last number of the LEs in the two hundreds, and you'll notice two seventeen is what they number to oftentimes in the other sets as well, and in this case, number two seventeen is a limited edition American Silver Explorer, and these are three-point generic crew with the Explorer ability and another ability that says any treasure coin printed with a silver number that the ship unloads at your home end is worth plus one gold. So this is one I haven't played with a lot. I don't have a ton of experience with it, but it's an okay strategy if you put a ton of silver. So in a standard game, you'd contribute eight coins. So uh, you could contribute all eight silver if you wanted to. That would be a good idea if you're using silver explorers. And then you could have multiple silver explorers in your fleet as well. Then you could really start to rack up bonuses and use it as an effective strategy. I would say part of the issue here is the plus one and plus two gold abilities are both extremely good. And they're not super rare. There's some crew with those abilities, like Jenny Gallows, for example. There's some ships with those abilities. The Spanish and the Pirates are both very good at it, especially the Spanish, as I went into recently. And uh, so Silver Explorers, I would say, are okay as a crew. I'm not a huge fan of Explorers in general. I think Helmsmen are almost always a better choice. So now you're paying three points for a Silver Explorer. Um, I, think it's, I think it's probably the right cost, though, because it's not just one treasure coin. That's one advantage they have over the other, the other gold bonus abilities, is those are usually... Uh, only one coin out of the ship's treasure hall. So the silver explorers are all, so it's any treasure coin that's silver is worth plus one gold. So you could get uh, bonuses on multiple coins from the same unload. So in that case, silver explorers 
are a little bit more versatile sometimes than the than the gold bonus crew or abilities, I should say. And one thing you can do is combine them. So you could combine, you can sense they're a different source of abilities or a different, they're just different abilities in general. You can stack them. So you can do a plus two gold ability and then a plus one gold ability for plus three. And then if it was a silver coin and you had a silver story, you could get plus four, which is actually part of the idea behind uh, one of Darren's UPS fleets. It's the one called Silver Crane. I think it's UPS four. I'll try to have a link to that in the description too, so you can check out a really competitive, really good fleet. And uh, that's one of the best ways to win in general is with gold bonuses and fast, fast gold chips and whatnot. And uh, the Americans, the faction, not a huge deal here. I'm talking about a generic crew, but the Americans in general, they have some ships that could use a silver explorer, like the rattlesnake maybe. Um, they don't have a ton of great options for gold running, but it's still, still a solid option. At least they got one. So game piece rating out of 10, I would say maybe 7 out of 10. I think the cost is kind of prohibitive. And unless you're playing with a lot of silver, or if you get lucky with the treasure distribution, it's not luck it's not likely to pan out super well, but it's still it's still definitely a solid strategy and one you could use to win with if if things break right, or if you use all silver, um, or if you stack it with other gold bonus abilities, things like that. So and part of that part of that rating. I have a weird feeling it might go up if I had used them more, so they might be more worthy than a 7 out of 10, possibly. I still need to use them more, like I said, so hopefully I'll get chances to do that. Um, and campaign games are not really one area where I have been using them, for example, and that's where a lot of my like play hours are accumulated. So anyway, so I would say 7 out of 10, but um, if you have experience with Silver Explorers, Feel free to uh, talk about that in the description below because I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on them. And Picture of the Day are from Economy Edition once again. And this one is actually one of my favorites from the game. It's a little bit blurry, but this was actually this is actually still my phone background. So uh, you can see the pirate fleet has this epic size. And uh, they basically built like an empire in the west here. And you can see just how crowded it is. The home island is almost totally full. And then they've got tons of ships coming and going to and from the home island. The whole picture is just like almost filled with ships, except at the lower right a little bit. You know, even then you've got like a port off to the right. And then the lagoon looks full. They've got the Bauchuan. So the pirates, uh, they were pretty epic in this game. And this picture really shows it. And then another one, this one is much more clear. It shows kind of a low level shot looking directly at the arch and the American ships sailing around and underneath it. And you can see a lot of red, the Congress, and I think the Munin maybe, and uh, some other ships with the colorful sails and whatnot. So this is a really cool picture as well. You can see Thompson's Island in the fort. You can just see that on top of the arch. And you can see ships through both the archways. There's another archway that's blocked in the middle. Uh, you can't quite see through it, but uh, you can see ships, the shorter ships can go underneath the short arch off to the right, and then in the background you can see the Harlequin transporting a military port upgrade, it looks like, um, beyond the arch. So, one of my favorite pictures of the arch in general. And then the last one is uh, the Hades Flame. She actually used a whirlpool to get into the lagoon, and you can see this is a custom island I made. It's a regular island, but then I put a little bit of sand, and then I put um, some rocks, and then I Finished it off with some metallic gold paint, which I would recommend uh, if you can get some for cheap. It's a good way to, to do some stuff. It's perfect for pirates because I've actually painted the backs of coins, um, make them more like shiny and metallic and more realistic looking. And, uh, and here I made a gold island. So instead of having resources, this island always produces gold. So And then I use it in Command the Oceans as well. So you can see it's a nice shiny gold color. And uh, it's one of my favorite custom islands in general. Not necessarily for size or how aesthetic it is, but the concept and uh, the shininess of it are nice. And you can see the Krakens defending all the pirate ships that were coming through the whirlpools in that game. So that's pretty much it for this uh, for this vlog. So thanks for watching. Uh, leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more pirates content, and uh, hopefully I'll have some other videos up soon as well too, as along with more vlogs. And check the check the description for links to all this stuff if you want to check it out. 
And uh, beyond that, I'll see you again soon.